Hello vinyl community, so I have some great records here to show you and uh, stuff that I've been listening to and it's all extremely fitting uh, music uh, regarding this hot summer we have here right now and um, so let's get on to it. Um, so what I've been listening to is uh, an interesting project by a German electronic music pioneer called Robert Schröder and this is this album Galaxy Cygnus A that was released in 1981, I think, no, 82. Um, and this was recorded for the Ars Electronica exhibition in Linz and uh, as, a, as, a, as a live performance uh, with some visual elements and uh, produced by Klaus Schulze. It came out the same year on his label here. Um, yeah, for me this is, uh, so basically this is a concept album about the nature of radio waves, of space, of uh, galaxies and uh, uh, maybe about the work of an astronomer and it's all kind of uh, transposed into the world of music and it, this works beautifully. I love this record, um, it has an amazing atmosphere and actually for me as far as space music goes or music that tries to capture uh, the essence, uh, the, the emotions of space, this might be the most successful, at least in my book, so this is certainly my favorite one in that regard. Now interestingly, um, I think in 2010 Robert Schröder has re-recorded this record, um, so here I have the CD here, um, so these two albums, um, excuse me, these two albums are not just uh, vinyl and CD of the same, they are actually two different recordings, even though they have uh, almost the same name. So um, it's quite interesting how he managed to recreate uh, all these 1982 sounds again and uh, sort of perform this whole piece again, but just this time with uh, um, yeah, I mean with the modern recording technology, so there is certainly more power behind this one. At first I was a bit skeptical, thinking, yeah, is it really necessary? I mean, this is such a wonderful record, do I need it? Do we need it uh, re-recorded? But, as a matter of fact, this is quite wonderful, listen to. I mean, it's basically the same material, but it's impressive how powerful it here sounds, how, how much more, how much more three-dimensional the music feels on the CD. So um, in that case um, I'm glad to have the CD and uh, obviously I listen more to the CD these days. Yeah, um, the next album I have listened to is quite uh, well known and it's it's almost pointless to show it here on a, in a VC video because I think this has been shown a thousand times. No Pussyfooting by Robert Fripp and Brian Eno, their first collaboration. Well, um, uh, let's put aside the fact that this came out in 1973, let alone makes it a absolute pioneering uh, statement done by these two musicians. Um, this is sort of a proto-ambient record or a early example of droning music. Uh, there is a certain operating principle behind this collaboration. So you have uh, the music is played completely by Robert Fripp only uh, on his guitar, but uh, that's the stuff that later became known as Frippatronics. And uh, then uh, Brian Eno took over and started to manipulate uh, this music and uh, combine it with some tape effects and so on. So um, yeah, this is. Uh, I think the, the album is uh, not as uh, not much a pleasant listen as you would probably expect from uh, from ambient records. Uh, there is of course a, some uh, slightly challenging element to it, so it's a bit of a progressive album. Um, interesting, of course, uh, is the fact that uh, records like that might be very, very revered today and regarded as these milestones and sort of a cult albums. But let's not forget, in 1973, this was not a particularly successful record. This was a sort of a, regarded as a novelty and uh, usually being 
more influential to other musicians and not that much to an audience. Uh, but uh, this tells you a lot about uh, sort of uh, expectations within the popular music industry. Um, usually that's what I think is like, let's wait 20, 30 years and then look back and then you suddenly see what has been really the good stuff and uh, what's been sort of a bummer. So this is a wonderful original album and uh, um, in this case uh, certainly a uh, interesting uh, purchase is uh, the CD version that was uh, released by Robert Fripp on his label not, uh, not long ago. Um, that's interesting because it's basically a double CD and uh, it has uh, the original material from the records on it from the record on it, but uh, in all kind of variations. So uh, there are uh, versions on the CDs um, where this whole music is slowed down. There are, I think, uh, some um, renditions that where this material runs backwards, all to show that this is kind of a different approach to music where the level of possible manipulation is much much higher than uh, with conventional music. Yeah, so uh, great stuff. Um, I have stayed in that mood, followed by uh, Fripp and Eno's second collaboration, Evening Star. Now this came out in 1975, so two years later. Now that's kind of exactly the same time when Brian Eno was doing his discrete music album. So there is some uh, stylistic and uh, contentual, is this a word? Contentual? I don't think so. There is some stylistic overlapping here uh, with uh, discrete music, certainly. Uh, it's still very experimental, uh, a lot of uh, droning themes, but uh, it's much closer to, it's much more a proto-ambient album, um, closer to the kind of music that uh, Ina was uh, chasing and trying to figure out in those days. It's a little bit more varied than their previous work, No Pussyfooting. Um, so um, it's, uh, yeah, you have uh, the, the production method is also a little bit more varied. So you have already Brian Ino playing here, some keyboards. Um, yeah, I was lucky with the, this copy. This is actually an original copy from 1975, but in a really, really good state. Um, sounds quite well, even well enough that I have uh, digitized it on my computer. I do that with some records uh, directly from uh, vinyl. Yeah, and uh, so this is a beautiful, beautiful album. Um, yeah, the, the cover the cover motif is again uh, something done by Peter Schmidt, which is this German artist that uh, uh, this painter that has been collaborating with Eno on all kind of things. Yeah, so uh, another another um, uh, sort of a milestone record of the seventies. Uh, again, probably not particularly successful when it came out. But, uh, of course, this has grown to be uh, sort of stuff of legends by now. And uh, finally, um, The Equatorial Stars is a uh, production by Fripp and Eno that suddenly happened uh, 20 years after that, in 2004. Now, the difference to the previous two albums uh, certainly lies in the fact that uh, um, between The Evening Star and this one, um, the world of ambient has been uh, kind of born. So um, this is actually a rather fully fledged ambient record. Um, actually, of, the, of those three uh, Fripp Eno collaborations, this is probably my favorite. Uh, the tracks are named after stars um, and uh, it's all in all a beautiful ambient record that uh, is always fun to listen. Um, this is a this is a re-release uh, from 2014 on Opal. Um, this on a 200 gram disc. Um, yeah, so this is a 
wonderful record in my collection. I really like it. Quite beautiful. I've shown this one before. This is Tropic by Oyukai Conjugate. And you can still choose if you want to look at, look at it that way or that way. I think both are correct. Uh, so this is the last record by Oyukai Conjugate uh, that came out uh, last year. And uh, that's based on uh, on uh, music elements uh, created in 1994-1995 while they've been recording their Equator album. Um, yeah, and it's quite uh, interestingly enhanced and uh, yeah, created as something new. And uh, it's a good record. Um, I keep listening to it and it just doesn't get old, uh, like everything by Oyukai Conjugate. There is a certain uh, interesting uh, freshness to it and it's, it's the kind of music that uh, keeps you interested. Now a um, real classic uh, example of uh, Proto Ambient is Rainbow Dome Music by Steve Hillage. Um, this is a brilliant uh, sort of a experimental electronic record by Steve Hillage and um, his musical partner Mike Girodi. So this is electronic experimental music with a strong sort of psychedelic attitude. Um, Well-known record. Um, again, uh, something that probably did not sell particularly well when it came out. Um, again in 1979. Um, but uh, of course uh, by now it has been widely Accepted as uh, another milestone album by Steve Hillage. Yeah, and finally, um, Shoot Off Assembly by Brian Eno, a record he made in 1992. Um, so, this is a beautiful vinyl release on All Saints uh, that, was, that came out in 2014. So, it's a gatefold sleeve uh, with a lot of uh, visual material. Uh, there are liner notes inside. I'll just pull it out a little bit. Um, so this is all music that uh, Brian Eno made for installations in the early 90s and it's kind of compiled here on this beautiful double album. It's always been one of my favorite uh, Eno records, I think. Um, something uh, beautifully uh, timeless about this music. And uh, that's it for now. So... As you can see, I've been sort of listening to spheric music. I do that from time to time and I do it for a day or two. And um, yeah, I've always liked ambient and proto-ambient music. And uh, it's always a great journey to uh, discover sounds that are so far away from any kind of a beaten track of popular music. So, um, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Goodbye.